Hey everybody, this is Lily from the Shizzle Network. We're back again and welcome back to yet another list video. Today I will be collaborating with Sky Media on doing the top 10 worst logos of all time. Hello everyone, this is Sky Media, aka Sky Storm, and welcome back to a special collaboration video where we're going to be doing a top 10 list. And uh, yeah, this top 10 list should be very interesting. Previously, I did a list video on my own where we talked about the 10 best logos of all time. Now, we're going to talk about the worst of the worst. Oh, God. Let, 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 let's, just ki let's just kick this off. To start off this top 10 list, we're going to be going with a very, very cheap logo that although it was fitting for its time, I still think it's really bad. What is this logo I'm talking about? The Columbia Pictures Television logo from 1982. Why this logo, you may ask? Well, let's be real, this logo is very cheap for its time. The logo is just the Columbia Pictures logo from the 1980s featuring the sunburst on screen unlike its 1970s counterpart, which actually goes into the sunburst as it's occurring. But their movie logo is a different story for another video. In this logo, we see no sunburst, unlike the previous Columbia Pictures television logo. The Torch Lady's robe is orange, unlike the blue robe seen in the film, and it features the Columbia Pictures text at the bottom of the Torch Lady's legs with the text television as an add-on. It also features a byline, a unit of the Coca-Cola company, since, spoiler alert, around that time, Columbia Pictures Industries, CPT's parent company, was owned by the Coca-Cola company. Now, now, now you guys are really going to love this. The purchase alone was $1.025 billion. You heard me right. Coca-Cola purchased Columbia Pictures Industries for $1.025 billion. How crazy was Coca-Cola to even want a movie studio to endorse their already popular name in the movie industry? Anyways, a lot of people, even me, noticed that the fanfare sounded like Coke pouring into glass, even though the fanfare was commissioned one year before the Coca-Cola purchase. Weird, cheap, and just flat out boring. It's not the worst, but this logo is nothing to be proud of, Columbia Pictures. Overall, good enough to reach 10, but even that is a low for a company who has iconic logos throughout its history, and even today. Anyways, on to my main man Larry, and number 9. did this logo come into any form of existence? Like seriously, it's one of those logos that will not only scare the piss out of you, but it will also blow your speakers out. Golly! Anyways, the logo features a square coming up into the screen as if it was about to pop through your screen, and then it rotates around and forms the F showing the film's incorporated text. Craziest thing is, is that it shows up on educational shows, videos for like schools and stuff back then when this devil used to exist. Gosh, every student must have been, must have pissed their pants at the sight of this thing. It's a terrible logo with horrible music, horrible animation, and it's just downright poorly executed. Jeez. Anyways, on to the next logo. Now for number 8, we have another Sony television logo from the past. Wow, Sony, your logo history when it comes to television is just, well, bad. Now, there are plenty of great Sony television logos, don't get me wrong, but this is not one of them. So let's talk about this logo for a second. Now, let's look past the scary logo factor, because really, does this logo look like the type of logo that would make you piss your pants as a child and as an adult? No, not really. This is one of the top three most overrated scary logos yet, sitting alongside the Viacom VF Doom and the Beat Backwards ND Mask of Guo Zhang. So for the love of God, folks, stop acting scared. This is not scary. <clears throat> now, let's talk about why this logo is a rotten egg and why it's number eight. First of all, you have a Latin letter S forming itself from very cheap film reel, and I mean very cheap, and a bland yellow background. The letter is a boring red, 
and apparently the S is supposed to represent light around the torch of the Columbia Torch Lady, since spoiler alert, Columbia Pictures owned the company at the time. The screen gem's lettering looks like bland Arial font, and Eric Zadea's cheap synthesizer music only expresses this logo's cheapness. Poor animation, bland elements, cheap music don't just make this logo scary, but they make this logo look extremely cheesy. So yeah, Sony, pat yourself on the back for having quite possibly one of the most cheesiest logos of television history. Yay you. Not. On to number 7 already. What the ever-living hell is this? Like seriously, many people refer to this logo as the Soda Pop logo because that's exactly what it looks like. So the screen fades into a space background as a large pink slash purple sun slowly moves towards us. After a few seconds of sizzling, it then transforms into the family home with probably one of the ugliest looking fonts ever. Then entertainment in the same font flies from behind the text onto the top of the screen and settles underneath the family home text. The logo then flashes and becomes white. After a few seconds, the logo flies up with computer effects and we are left with a terrible shot of the stars before we fade out. It's, it's just a terrible logo with awful animation ear grating sound effects and unbearable visuals. The quote unquote sun looks like the most fake thing in the world and it looks more like stock footage of a fizzing alka tablet on a green screen tinted purple than anything else. The colors look rather gaudy and the space background looks like it was done on an Apple II computer. The closing logos wiki actually said this, I'm not kidding. Let's just move on. Now for number 6, and what better a place on this list for a logo that represents a company that during the logo's existence was scrambling for dear life and just trying too hard. None other than the Deke Entertainment logo from 1990. <sighs> Talk about a logo that combined with the shows coming out of Deke at the time perfectly described what Deke was. Just flat out atrocious! Deke had terrible shows and dubs of video game characters like Mario and Sonic, anime characters like Sailor Moon, and awful reuse of their already washed up Inspector Gadget. Nothing, and I mean nothing, describes this terrible era other than this logo. In this logo, we see a kid in bed at nighttime as the camera zooms into the night sky from out the window. And you might be thinking at this point, oh, not bad so far. Well, you would be wrong, because a spiky, horribly 3D rendered sphere approaches the screen as the Deke logo comes forward doing a 90 degree turn. Then the sphere smooths out and the Deke text is completed. Woohoo! The zooms are, well, okay for the time. But what really bothers me is the fact that the 3D objects in their animations were very cheap and look like something out of Blender but done by an amateur. On top of that, the quality was very low in the overall making of this logo, and the music, along with the first few visuals of the logo, give a kind of creepy factor. The Closing Logos Wikia ranks this logo scare factor as low, but even this kind of gives me shivers to the day. Man, this logo was the perfect description of Deke during the 90s. Ambitious, cheap, poor quality, rushing all seem apparent in this logo and at Deke. And you wonder why they went downhill in the 2000s before being snatched up and turned into DHX media. Sad times, Deke. Sad times indeed. Onward to number 5. What. The. Hell. Did. I watch. This logo reminds me of an old 8-bit PC game but very cheesy and freaking seizuristical. 
This logo is also one of the longest logos ever made right next to Hendring Limited. Oh, spoilers, we'll get to that. Back to what I was saying, this logo is a crappy ripoff of Super Video. You thought Super Video was bad, which was an honor which is an honorable mention by the way. It's nothing compared to this. In fact, I was originally going to put Super Video on this spot, but after seeing this Greek logo, I found it to be worse. We start we start off with videos of fireworks, then we cut to some particles making patterns. The yellow and white patterns then flashes a bit until we cut to a strange gray spiral moving and flashing different colors. The spiral stops moving and it reveals the logo leaving trials, which is shown as it follows. Photo video with a phone number and a street address. Just FYI, don't call the number, it doesn't work. Anyway, two of the lines are either flashing colors or changing dark darkness and the border quote unquote shines. Then we cut to the logo on a black background with Greek text and with some of it flashing different colors are seen below the logo with its bylines. A few seconds later, we cut to another series of text with which is more bylines. Then we then it cuts to the logo alone, which then spirals around in a tr with a trial effect. The logo then stops trailing, trailing around, and the background remains in a complicated mess of colors. It then finally cuts back to the fireworks. Ugh. This logo is just a jumble mess. It makes absolutely no sense. The animation is terrible. It's incredibly seizuristical. The music is terrible. And it's downright stupid. Jesus. Whoever made this logo should go have sex with a chainsaw. Ha ha, Taylor reference. Oh boy, don't start with the Taylor references again, Larry. Now for number four, we focus our attention on a public television station's logo, particularly Connecticut Public Television. Now this logo was seen a whole lot at the end of Barney on PBS stations nationwide. And while this logo may seem very innocent, do not be deceived. This logo spells cheesy all over it. I wonder if the guy who operates Connecticut Public Television is from Green Bay. <sighs> Anyways, in this logo we see a glass C forming itself from multiple cheap colored C's, which a dot, which looks like it was a low res JPEG, zooms on top of the C and sparks fly from it. And trust me, they're not the good type of sparks. A bland Connecticut public television text fades in under the top side of the C. The music is, well, cheap. But like all the other logos we saw between the 1960s and 1990s, is that a huge surprise? Nah, not really. The logo's cheesiness is just flat out painful to watch. And it's sad that Connecticut Public Television had to get its logo driven to trash. But the strangest part is according to Wikipedia, the animators of this logo, who had a hard time finding their name on the internet, also animated one of the greatest public television logos of all time. And that was also based in the 1990s. What is this magical logo you may ask? Well, beast your eyes, because it's the Corporation for Public Broadcasting logo with circle glass from the 1990s. How? How is it possible that the animators came up with the most cheesiest logos in public television history that they came up with one of the most executed, animated, and well done logos of pretty much all time, especially when we talk about public television history. In fact, the CPB logo of the 1990s even got a reanimation and showing for an SNF skit that aired on NBC. It makes me wonder. Were these guys just starting off of animating the CPT logo and then they maxed out in the CPB logo? Or was it vice versa? Oh fuck it, I'll never know these answers to these dumb insolvable questions. Anyways, to number three we go! You all had to see this one coming. The longest 
logo ever made. I mean, I had to abridge the logo for the sole purpose of making sure this video doesn't go too long. In fact, this logo is so long that I'm not even going to talk about uh, how the whole entire logo is because it literally is that long. Let's just say, long story short, it involves some kind of a thief walking inside of a house. Basically, I guess to rob the place, I suppose. I don't know. But we do see a table of golden objects and a golden statuette as well. And I'm assuming he's after that. But then we also see a lamp, which, uh, a red place symbol that basically forms in an H. And it glows red repeatedly throughout the whole entire logo as he goes through the rest of the house. And he even has a small box of necklaces. And then he also drops it as it shows in slow motion. And then the logo, uh, and then the logo the circles erase them uh, as we fade to a black background we see the white outline on, of a pause button with a red symbol on it and at the bottom of the screen we see a teal blue word that says hindering the pause symbol and word then fade out leaving the place symbol on the screen and it fades out to a couple of seconds i'm not joking at all it's that long I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to go into detail. Just move on to the next logo because Jesus Christ this logo pisses me off so much but it only gets worse from here. Oh boy, we have entered the top two. Now I know some people are gonna be very mixed on whether or not this logo is really number two worst of all time. But if I may, let me explain why this Paramount Closet Killer logo is well, very deserving of the number two spot. Look. Say what you will about the scare factor of this logo, but it is very annoying, irritating, and just flat out pisses me off. Look, this is no ordinary closet killer. It's basically in a rectangle separated into two boxes. We see the Paramount television text as we zoom in sonic speed into the Paramount mountain. This music is way blown out of proportion. And can I say it? This animation absolutely sucks. Like, my god, is it really necessary to try to falsely scare your viewers at the end of your programming Paramount? And it's not even scary at all. Stop saying that this logo will give you nightmares. It's a 10 second logo. All it does is present its cheapness, overblown mood, and it's just flat out horrible antics. This logo pisses me off so much that I want to take that mountain and blow it up with 20 of Scarface's guns. Paramount, just be glad that you're not number one on this list. <sighs> I'd need plenty of Advil after going over that awfully annoying logo. I just pray for the company and logo who gets to sit at unlucky number one. Prepare for the worst, people. Now, let's find out who got number one. Larry, take it away. What kind of drugs were the creators on when they made this abominable, torturing, screaming mess? This is the cheapest logo that I've ever seen. And it is the worst. Like, the worst. On the stock on the stock space background, a skull with eyes turns around in a jittery manner until it stares at us. Just before it's done, the screen the screen quickly fades to black before it quickly cutting back. A, a man's arm with a blue shirt and white glove holding a syringe full of pink liquid that looks like Pepto Bismol appears from the left. He ingests the liquid into the skull's left eye. The skull screams, which is done with a dissolving fading effect. We then cut to a black background where, where Zombastic in green appears in an exploding effect. Productions ink and pink blurs into the place, letter by letter to the right as Zombastic shines. We then cut back to the space background where the skull's still there, albeit yellow tainted. Without the arm and his mouth is open, completely in shock, the pink liquid is dripping from all 
all of his orf orifices. Uh, the skull blurs incredibly, turning nearly white, uh, and zooms in towards the right side of the screen. The skull then disappears, and the screen fades to white, then cuts to black. My god, this logo is freaking stupid! The droning synth, the sci-fi sounds, the skull, and screams will scare most people to the point where it will wet their pants to the stupidity of this logo! Screw everything about this logo! It sucks, and there's no reason for this piece of elephant crap to exist! It makes Oz Film look like the greatest logo ever made! I'm dead serious. Screw this logo. It is literally the worst logo I had ever seen in my entire life. Alright, I gotta calm down. Thank you guys for watching this video. I would like to give a shout out to Sky Media. Uh, he makes great videos. He's a great, great friend of mine. Uh, and special thanks to him for collaborating with me on this top 10 list video. Much like how uh, Mr. Director Ray collaborated with me on the uh, top 10 best movie logos of all time. Alright guys, if you guys really like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe because my man Larry is putting out amazing content every day. If you want the latest, follow him on Twitter, follow him on SoundCloud, follow him on Facebook. Also, subscribe to me because I'm at 320 subscribers and I'm looking for 400 now. And uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter. The Twitter it handle is at GoSkyMedia. And remember, before you judge someone, look in the mirror. Don't pop a molly because you won't be sweating. And say it with me all, stay off the weed. Storm is out. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more videos, phone issues, or network. And until then, please don't just be on the internet. As always, stay for yourself. And be sure to subscribe to also Sky Media. And be sure to follow me on Twitter. Take care.